station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. I'm ready. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear, ACR. How do you hear me? Loud and clear. Please stand by for opening remarks. Hello, everyone. I'm Rob Smith, principal of North Decatur Elementary School in Greensburg, Indiana. We are so excited to have this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for our school and community. Thank you to our special guest, school committee members, and to all who have made this event possible for us today. Now, here's our first question. Hi, my name is Chloe. My question is, what were your thoughts going into space for the first time? Hi, Chloe. This is my very first trip to space. So it wasn't long ago that I was climbing into the rocket with the rest of my crew in Florida for my launch. And I think most of all, I felt prepared. We had done a lot of training to get to that moment. So we felt ready as a crew and as individuals. And I was also just excited. It was an amazing experience to sit there on the launch pad. And as the countdown came in, I just got this overwhelming feeling of joy to finally be getting the opportunity to fly to space and accomplish my dream. Hi, my name is Ellen, and my question is, how do you brush your teeth in space? Hi, Ellen. We brush our teeth in space a lot like you do on the ground. We have regular toothpaste and toothbrushes, but it's a little different because we don't have running water up here because it's an apparent microgravity environment. So we get our water out of bags to wet our mouth and our teeth, and then you brush your teeth like usual. But we also don't have sinks or any plumbing, so you actually spit the foam from your mouth into a towel, and over time it just dries out and that moisture is reclaimed by the water reclamation system. Hi, my name is Gabe. My question is, how do you drink water in space? Hi, Gabe. We actually use drink bags with straws. The straws are really helpful. They have clips to make sure that the water doesn't leak out until we're ready, because it, the second I open this, it'll come out, so I got to be prepared. And it's actually pretty cool because we don't really experience gravity the same way up here. Water is able to form perfect spheres the way it wants to from surface tension. So usually you can get a little bit of a bubble and then once you let it go, you try to drink it before it gets away. Hi, my name is Jessica. My question is, what foods do you eat in space? I also have another little show and tell for that question. Um, I thought you guys might ask about that, so I grabbed the things I was planning to eat for dinner later this evening, just so you can see kind of a normal meal. I have a cashew chicken curry here. These are all rehydratable items that I've chosen. So basically they remove the water on earth to help preserve them, and then I'll add hot water back in and put them in an oven so that the water gets reabsorbed. I also have pasta with shrimp. You can see a little shrimp in there. And I have some vegetables here, kale, and some Italian vegetables, kind of mixed vegetables with herbs there. Um, we have a lot of pretty good food up here. One of the things they really try to provide for us is variety because um, they want us to eat healthy and eat enough calories so we don't lose weight. But if we get bored of the food, then people kind of lose their appetite. So we have a pretty good variety up here of different things we can eat. And there's also some cool studies going on testing out some new foods that provide different health benefits like omega-3 acids. Hi, my name is Abrianna. My question for you is, do you ever get sick in space? And is there medicine available to take?
we go through a pretty strict quarantine protocol before we launch just to make sure that we're not bringing any sicknesses or illnesses up to the space station. And overall, people are pretty healthy up here. There are some things that can happen to most people, like fluid shifts. Because we're not experiencing gravity in the same way, a lot of the fluid that we'd normally carry in the lower body shifts into our heads, and sometimes it feels like you have a little bit of sinus congestion. So there's medicine we can take for that, but we're prepared for more serious things too. And actually, we're lucky because we have a medical doctor on our crew. Tom Marshburn worked as an ER physician before becoming an astronaut. So if anything happens to us, we know we'd be well taken care of. Hi, my name is Henry, and my question for you is, what is your favorite feature about the Astro B robot and why? I'm in a good place for you to have asked me that question because I'm right next to the Astro Bees, actually. Here's one of them. This is Bumble. And these are really cool robots. They can fly around and they have some artificial intelligence and learning capability. But we're able to dock all sorts of different kinds of sensors on them. And the idea here with the Astro Bees is we might be able to teach them to do tasks that are repetitive and fairly simple so that astronauts can focus on doing things only humans can do. So a few things that I've seen Astro B learn how to do is grab objects and move them around, uh, do acoustic surveys to see if there is anything wrong with our equipment. Um, and it also, one thing that would be really cool if it learned how to do it and it's working on it is find lost items. A lot of times we lose things up here, but they have RFID tags. So you can actually mount a reader on here that can try to detect where those items are and then Astro B could come tell us they found what we lost the other day. Hi, my name is Avery. My question was, what is your daily routine on the space station. Well, Avery, during the work week on days like today, we usually get up around 6 or 6.30 and our workday starts at 7.30. And then throughout the day, we're working basically until 7.30 p.m. We have planning conferences with all the control centers around the world, both in the morning and the evening. And in, bet in between, we're working on science experience experiments, maintenance tasks. We're also given time to work out every day. And so it's it can be pretty busy, but because we have a good team up here, my crewmates always help me out if I get behind and I try to help them out if, I, if they get behind. Um, but we usually get some free time on the weekends too. So we're able to sleep in a little bit and uh, take some time for ourselves. Hi, my name is Wyatt and my question is, how do you keep your bones and muscles healthy in space? We actually have three different pieces of exercise up equipment up here that we use every day to stay strong. So we have two for cardiovascular training, a bike called Sevis and a treadmill called T2. So usually you pick one of those to do and you can either bike or run and that way we exercise our hearts and stay in good shape cardiovascularly. But we also have a weightlifting machine called A-RED and that can do all sorts of different exercises. It's kind of like a transformer machine. So you can do bar exercises or cable exercises, but that's really important for loading our bones because most of the to us, we feel weightless up here. So unless we remind our bodies that it needs to learn how to carry load and maintain that capability, we'd have a hard time adjusting back to gravity on Earth. Hi, my name is Piper and my question is, what took the longest to get used to in space and why? Piper, I think for me, the thing that took longest to get used to is that everything floats, which is super cool and really fun. But when you're working hard and you have a lot of equipment out, sometimes you forget to strap things down or tape them down to the wall and you let go, look away for too long, and all of a sudden an important piece of hardware has disappeared and you spend a bunch of time looking for it and sometimes you don't ever find it. But usually when the things f float away and we don't think we can find them, a couple of days later, they'll just appear in the middle of a of a module floating and somebody will let you know. So for me, it was learning that I always have to really strap things down, especially important equipment, so that I can actually finish my tasks. Hi, my name is Elena. My question is, what does it feel like when coming back from outer space? It 
it is a pretty wild ride on the trip back from outer space. For us, we'll fly back in our Dragon capsule and splash down in the water and get recovered by a boat. And so that experience is kind of crazy ride, but we've trained for it and I think we're ready for it. The biggest thing that's hard to get used to is there are a lot of little muscles that you kind of don't have to use up here that you're using every single day to stand and walk around. So even though we exercise, there are some things that I don't think we're able to practice naturally. And we also have to adjust our vestibular system. And that's a little system in your inner ear that helps you understand how your body is oriented. And because when we're in space, it's not like it is on Earth where you sort of get those normal inputs. Our brain kind of shuts down or reorients how it understands those inputs from our vestibular system. So just learning how to balance well and react to the things around you in a normal Earth gravity environment takes a little bit of time. Hi, my name is Andrew, and my question for you is, what training does it take to prepare for space, and how long does it take? Well, Andrew, I started training to be an astronaut in August of 2017, so about four and a half years between when I started training and me being up here on the space station. I spent two years in astronaut candidate training, and that's kind of like our basic training, where we learn all of the basic skills we'll need to succeed for a future mission. And then I spent a year and a half training specifically for this flight to come up here and spend six months aboard the space station. But we learn how to do all sorts of things, like spacewalks, operating robotics, all about the space station systems that you see around me here. We also learned to speak Russian so that we can work well with our Russian colleagues from the Russian Space Agency. So it's a pretty busy job uh, and there's a lot to learn, but we have fantastic trainers on the ground who make sure that we know everything we need to to succeed up here. Hi, my name is Brayden. Do you have free time at the space station? And if so, what do you do with it? Brayden, I spend my free time up here a lot like I do on Earth. I like to read, so I've been reading books. I also like to call my family and friends back home and see how they're doing. Um, also just enjoy the experience of being up here with my crewmates and friends. So we spend a lot of time hanging out together and talking. And an amazing thing we can do up here is look out the window back at the incredible views of the earth. We have this really cool window called the cupola where we can get a 360 degree view of the earth. So a lot of us spend time just gazing out the window by ourselves or together and seeing the amazing sights. Hello, my name is Wyatt. My question is, what advice would you give to a student who wants to become an astronaut? Well, Wyatt, the first thing I would tell you is there is no one path to becoming an astronaut. Sometimes when you learn about astronauts, you'll notice certain things and certain similarities. But what I've noticed, especially in my class of astronaut candidates who train together, the turtles, people come from all different backgrounds. We have planetary geologists, microbiologists, engineers, military pilots, military submariners like me. And so there are a lot of different paths to get to become an astronaut. But I think the commonalities are people who are passionate about learning, passionate about working on teams and have really challenged themselves to understand how to be part of a highly functioning team, who are service oriented. And so I think the most important thing you can do is challenge yourself at things you're passionate about. I think developing all of the skills you need, you have to challenge yourself, push yourself to your limits. But if you're doing it with awesome people and you're doing things you really believe in, then it's fun and fulfilling along the way, even if it's challenging. Hi, my name is Bree, and my question is, do you get to choose space experiments or does somebody give you experiments? Well, Bree, during my six months up here on the space station, our crew is helping with over 350 different science experiments. So we're more like laboratory, laboratory technicians executing the things that can only be performed by a human. But all of those experiments are run by investigators on the ground who spend years developing the procedures, the hardware, and the all of the experimental equipment they need for us to run experiments. So on a given day, I might be helping with three to five different science 
experiments along with all my crewmates. So I don't always get to choose, but they do try to help us participate in things that interest us like plant experiments or Astro B or working with the electron microscope are all cool things that I've done recently um, that have been awesome to be a part of. Hi, my name is Javen and my question is, how does your spacesuit work and how long will it take before you have to go back to the space station? Well, Javen, a spacesuit is a pretty complicated piece of equipment. You can actually think about it as a tiny spacecraft, a one-person spacecraft, because it needs, it has to have all the things we need to survive, air to breathe, water to drink, a system to cool us, and the suit has to maintain pressure because we're outside in the vacuum of space where there's no atmosphere and nothing to breathe. And so it's a pretty complicated piece of equipment, and it has to allow us to move around and do really hard work. So it's pretty complicated, but I think you could probably learn more about it if you ask your teachers or check it out online. When we're outside, we have about seven hours of consumables, sometimes a little bit more depending on how hard we're working or how much power we're using. But you can can stay outside anywhere between six to eight hours, depending on how much work you're trying to get done and how all of those systems perform. Hi, my name is Max. My question is, do you believe a far could be created in space someday? I really hope so, Max. I think growing our own food in space would be fantastic, not only for having fresh food to eat, which would be amazing, but also I think there's a huge mental health benefit from growing plants. I like to garden and grow plants back on Earth, so it's fun to do it up here. We've actually had a ton of cool plant experiments going on since I've been up here, all sorts of different things, and some of them we actually get to eat. So we had chili peppers when I first arrived. We harvested and ate chili peppers, had a taco night, and and that was a fantastic addition to that. And right now we're growing salad greens that we're hoping to harvest and make part of our dinner someday soon. Hi, my name is Kaylee. My question is, Kayla Barron, do you hope to inspire other girls to one day become an astronaut? I really hope so, Kaylee. I think it's really powerful to see people who look like you, who have a similar identity, doing the things that you dream of. I know for me, as a woman in the military, it was always really inspiring to me to see the other women who were ahead of me and leading to show that I could succeed in that organization as well. So I hope that by being an astronaut and being up here on the space station, I can help girls like you believe that they can do it too. Hi, my name is Note. My question is, how do you fill and keep air in your tanks? We actually fly air in pressurized tanks up on our cargo resupply vehicles. So we have oxygen and nitrogen that we can release into the space station to help us control pressure and also keep the air at a safe mix um, because we need enough oxygen to breathe, but we don't want too much or else there could be flammability concerns. So we get those on cargo vehicles and we have plenty of them. Hi, my name's Caden and my question is, when you go to sleep, do you get the feeling or sensation of laying down? Well, Kaden, it kind of depends on how you set up your sleeping bag. Some people like to set up their sleeping bag tight against the wall of their crew quarters, which is kind of like our little bedrooms and offices up here. And that kind of gives them the feeling that they're lying against a bed. But some people like me, I like to feel actually more like I'm floating. I have found I'm more comfortable if I only attach my sleeping bag at the very top and the very bottom, and I just kind of float between those two attachment points. It took me a little while to get used to it, a couple days, but once I did, I actually found I was more comfortable just kind of embracing the feeling of floating. Hi, my name is Finley. My question for you is, what do you do for fun up there in space? Finley, we like to have all sorts of fun contests that you can't have on Earth, or you could do similar ones, but we like to do things like see who can float the farthest through the modules without touching anything. And I really like to practice cool new space flips. So I'm gonna try one that I've been working on for you. I like to try to, a flip with a twist so I end up facing the other direction at the end. We'll see how it goes.
Hello, I'm Dave Sell, sixth grade science teacher at North Decatur Elementary. I would like to thank the space station astronauts and the NASA team for taking the time to answer our questions today. I would also like to thank our education team here at North Decatur, which is composed of educators, administrators, technology support staff, parent volunteers, and the students for all their hard work on this event. Finally, I would also like to thank our special guests for attending today. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you so much to everybody at North Decatur Elementary. It was a pleasure talking to you today. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you to all the participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.